his grandma sits me down and she looks right at me and she goes, so are you going to marry my grandson? And I was like, whoa. What is up, happy and healthy? I am your host, Janine Amapola, and welcome back to the podcast. Oh my gosh, it feels so good to be back. Um, today, I'm doing a solo episode, and if you are new here, my name is Janine, now Janine Ward. Oh my gosh, I just got uh, married two weeks ago. Um, I still intend on keeping Amapola, but adding on Ward, especially on social media, Um, But legally, eventually, I will become Janine Ward, which is so crazy. I feel like that's something we got to talk about is just the idea of grieving a last name. But anyway, my podcast is Happy and Healthy. I post every single Tuesday. Um, We may be taking a two-week break at the end of December, just near New Year's Eve, and then we'll start back up in January. But we do plan on continuing this podcast until December, which is so fun. I'll be having a series coming out for the holidays, so stay tuned for that every Tuesday. And again, Again, my name is Janine and I am a Christian. I'm 29 years old. I just got married two weeks ago and I just go on this podcast to just share all the things that I'm learning in life, things that God is showing me. And I just want to help people overall. I have such a heart for young adult women. And that is the goal of this podcast is to provide wisdom and insights and just for you to have a safe place just to come hang out. And so I have absolutely loved this podcast. It has been my favorite thing. It is a dream come true. It's growing so fast. And so I just want to say thank you to all the listeners, the people that support this podcast that even donate monthly and that sem- that submit voice memos. And so I love to feature those. I'll definitely feature one at the end. Um, but today I'm really excited for this episode because I know I've done a lot of episodes with my husband, Caleb, and I was just like, okay, I need to sit down. I need to chit chat with the girls. But what's so funny is like, I have more, I actually have guy listeners now, which is really cool. When I was in, um, not Houston. Oh my gosh. Why would I say Houston? When I was in Oklahoma this past weekend for Thanksgiving, which we'll get into that, but we, we attempted to go black Friday shopping and I, just couldn't do it. But uh, we went into Lululemon. It was so chaotic in there. I was like, I can't do this. But as I was in there, maybe God had me going there because this guy came up to me and he was like, oh my gosh, are you Janine from Happy and Healthy? And I was like, yeah, that's me. And he's like, your podcast got me through a really dark time in my life, which is just so crazy. I mean, truly blows my mind. And I was like, wow, praise God. Thank you for listening. So it just goes to show we don't only got the girlies on here. We got the I'm like, what's the equivalent of girlies? The guys that, no, I'm not even going to try to make that a thing. Um, Not a thing. So we do have some men on here. So shout out to y'all, which maybe because Caleb has come on this podcast, he's kind of helped bring in a more influx of men, which has been really cool. So welcome. If you're a dude, you can, you can come hang out here as well. So for today's episode, I just want to hang out with you guys. I want to sit down. I want to catch up with you guys. But then also I asked you guys on the happy and healthy um, broadcast channel. So make sure you guys are following that. I post in there a ton. I asked you guys what you wanted me to talk about. And there's some biblical things you guys want to talk about marriage. Um, and even on my own personal broadcast, I'm answering some of those questions question. So we're just going to be doing catch up and then we're going to be reading the Bible because I, like I said, I'm a Christian. And I love to always provide biblical insight. And today we're going to not use headphones. I just am not feeling it. I have these cute little earrings on today. If you're watching the YouTube, which you should, they're from Jenny Bird. And I just was like, I don't want to wear headphones today. So I hope this sounds good. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy hanging out with me today. We're just going to, we're just going to hang out. We're going to chit chat. We're going to catch up. So get yourself a drink. I have an Alani new drink. I had coffee this morning and get yourself a drink, sit down, hang out with me and let's chat. All right. I'm going to attempt to open this can on camera. So hold on. I'm going to put the microphone there without breaking a nail. Lord willing. Oh gosh. This is really hard when you have really long nails. Is that not satisfying or am I just psycho? (laughs) I'm triggering all the ASMR people. So good. I love this flavor. It's their Alani new peach peach flavored. It's so good. Okay. What is up y'all? I got my Uggs on. I got my sweatpants. I'm wearing a little sweater from Abercrombie. I'm in chill vibes. As of today, it is Sunday the 26th. I have been married for two weeks, which is baloney. No, not baloney. Bonkers is probably the word I was looking for instead. (laughs) Sometimes I listen back to myself on this podcast and I'm like, are you okay? Like what is going on in your brain? 
I wonder the same thing, you guys. So anyway, um, I've been married for two weeks and I just made this TikTok the other day, actually literally today. And I was like, I've been married for three weeks. I realized, no, it has not been three weeks. It's been two weeks. Um, so I might delete that and repost it. But anyway, I've been married for two weeks. Caleb and I just got back from Oklahoma last night and we also went to the OSU game, which was crazy, literally so crazy. So we got back from our honeymoon We filmed that podcast for y'all. The honeymoon was so amazing. And we immediately went right back to work because obviously my full-time job is social media. I had some brands to work with and I have a big project coming out in March and I had a lot of stuff to do for that. So I really haven't had much downtime, which I know that sounds kind of crazy, but like even on the honeymoon, that, that was really good. Like that was downtime. So I'm thankful for that. But then I came back and immediately went straight back to it, back to work, which is great because I love my job. I love working. It's doesn't, thankfully it doesn't feel like work to me, but it was just a lot of stuff to do. And then we were back for two days. We decorated for Christmas, which was so fun. We had our first Christmas together. Now it's actually funny. The difference between me and Caleb is Caleb is more the heavy, heavy lifting kind of guy. He puts up the tree, got the boxes out. You know, he put everything away. He put the star on the top, got the ladder out. Like he did all that stuff, but I was more the decorator. So I'm learning that in marriage, like, okay, I'm going to be the decorator. He's just going to be the heavy lifter, which is fine. I feel like that is more traditional and that's great. I mean, there's just certain things that like I'm more picky on when it comes to decorating than him. So I did most of the decorations, but It was just so fun decorating with my husband. I was like, wow, it's so crazy when you can look back and be like, these are the moments that I've prayed for. These are the moments I've waited for. And I've never had that before. I've never had, you know, where I got to decorate with somebody and it just felt right. And like, it it was just, it was just so crazy. So that was just so sweet and tender and the house is so cozy now. And so we went to Oklahoma for Thanksgiving and his whole family is from Oklahoma. So he has actually a very big family. So the difference between his family and my family, and also I'm sorry if you can hear me, we're both sick actually right now. He's like more sick than me, but I have like a stuffy nose and we both had sore throats the last two days. The difference between his family and my family is If you're a longtime listener, you might know that I've been drinking AG1 for about a year and a half. I've talked about them in previous episodes as well as on my social media. And when I started drinking AG1 daily, I could notice such a difference. I had better energy and I could focus more. And who doesn't want that in a busy day? And that's because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. And I even got my fiance on it. So even my fiance has started drinking AG1 and he always tells me how he feels better. He definitely has some gut things he needs to work out. And AG1 has definitely helped with that and his overall gut health. And so I love that for him and what it does for me as well. So if you guys want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of the vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash healthy. That's drinkag1.com slash healthy. Check it out. Well, first of all, my family's more more chaotic than his. My family's late. We're chaotic. We're all over the place. His is very more like reserved and on time and cleanly, like clean, cleaner, more cleanly. I guess that's the word. My family can be very chaotic, but The difference really is that he has his whole family in Oklahoma and my family, my only my immediate family is in Texas. Well, not, not anymore. So because my parents are from different countries, Germany and Guatemala, my grandparents and cousins are all abroad. And I actually had someone ask me like, why didn't your, or did your other family come? And no, I invited every single one of them. None of them could make it. I know international flights are expensive and the whole ordeal, but none of my German and Guatemalan family could make it to the wedding, which was kind of a bummer. But my family in itself is so big because I'm one of seven kids and my siblings have six kids. So my brother has four, my sister has two boys, and that there's six kids in the family. And so there's already seven siblings, or six siblings, six kids, plus spouses. Because now I'm the fifth sibling to get married, but four siblings already had spouses. So my family's big, but it's only like the immediate family that like lives here. However, all my siblings live abroad. Like one lives in Alaska, two live in Seattle, two live in Austin, I live here, my brother lives 30 minutes outside of Dallas, and my parents are here. 
So we're like all over, but his whole family is within 30 minutes of each other, which I just think is so, so cool. So every time we go to Thanksgiving or whatever, I'm like every time when I've only been twice, <laughs> when we go to Thanksgiving, it's like we get to see his entire family, which is just so fun. I absolutely love his family. And he has both like uncles and aunts there, all of his cousins, grandma, grandpa. I mean, it's just so, so freaking fun. I love his sisters. Um, his sister Taylor and I are the same age and we just get along really, really well. And his sister Hannah, she has a boy named Jed. He's like literally the cutest little thing. He was the one that walked down the aisle um, and he, he was supposed to walk down with my nephew, uh, Denver. That didn't work out if you listened to the last episode. Um, but anyway, it's just so fun being with them. And we played football and like their, their family or his family is very similar to mine in the sense where we just talk. We talk for hours. My family is like that. We literally, we were never like a really big game family growing up. Like we weren't like, let's decorate, let's play games. Now, as we've gotten older, we are more, um, I would say like game oriented because we were like, okay, we're getting bored, but Caleb's family loves to chit chat. So that was so fun. We literally talked for like, like eight hours. It was crazy. So we had so much fun doing Thanksgiving and it was really cool being there on Thanksgiving because the last time I was there was when Caleb and I had just gotten back together. And it was the first time he's ever brought a girl home. It was the first time I was meeting his entire family. And it just felt like a big deal. Like I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this. I'm meeting this man's family. And um, his family is not very in your face, which I really respect. Like they were very welcoming, very loving, very accepting, like never drilled me, never made me feel crazy, never condemned me for my career, anything like that. Now, if you watch my podcast where I talked about my crazy stories, you know that I went through a story like that where like a family in my past, like straight up condemned me and did not pick me and did not, I don't know, There's you can listen to that story. It was crazy. So I, I went into meeting his family with all this fear of like, what if that's going to happen again? What if they don't like me? What if, you know, blah, 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 blah. And none of that happened. Praise God. So that was the first time. And it was funny because we had just gotten back together. Um, his grandma, which I think I mentioned this on my Instagram story. It was so funny. We had just gotten back together after, uh, no, before Thanksgiving. His grandma sits me down and she looks right at me and she goes, so are you going to marry my grandson? And I was like, whoa, grandma Jean, we've been dating for three months. I'm like, relax. Oh, and I started like sweating. I'm like, dang, grandma Jean put me on the spot. But it was good because obviously I had broken up with Caleb. I was freaking out. We got back together and she's like, she doesn't want to see her grandson get hurt again. She knew we would eventually end up getting married, but she wanted to like hear it from me. And I was like, I have no intentions of hurting your grandson. I love him, blah, blah, blah. So it was funny going to Thanksgiving this year and being in like it was like oh like I'm in this family now like I have equity like there was one point where the family like got into this like really good discussion that like needed to happen and it was so weird being like oh I can like say things like I'm not like the newbie like girlfriend that has like no equity here like I chimed in and like people actually like listened and I was like wait this is so weird and Caleb could do the same thing in my family like I think once you you're married you have that equity now to be like, okay, I can say something and y'all actually listen, which is kind of crazy and kind of nice. So you're, you don't have to just sit there and be silent. So that was really fun. And, um, so Caleb's parents are divorced. So we later the next day went to his dad's house and his dad just got this brand new, beautiful house. And we stayed there and they made a little room for us. And that's also really interesting. I'm just going to be honest. Like it's interesting sharing a room at your in-laws house. And you're like, wait, are we allowed to do this? Like, it's just all part of like being newly married is like these new things you're experiencing. Like we never shared a room before. And so when we would stay at his parents' house, it's like, we were always splitting up. We were always splitting up. And this time it was like, oh, we're in the same bed. <laughs> and that was just so weird. Like, and I'm like, I'm sure this is like kind of weird for his parents too. You know what I mean? And so that was really just fun and different. And then on Saturday, we went to the OSU versus BYU game and we both love college football. The only downfall was that it was raining and freezing. So I have like three layers on. I have a scarf, a beanie, gloves, puffer jacket, like so many layers on. And I'm still so cold. My toes are freaking going numb. The game was so good though. Like it was such a turnaround, but the good thing is that we both love college football. So because OSU won, which is his team, they're going to now play against Texas on Saturday the 2nd. So we're going to try to go to that game because I went to Texas and it was just so fun. Like going to the game with him being like, oh my gosh, like we both love this together. Like this wasn't like me being like, oh, you're dragging me to a college football game. Like he kept talking about how it was such a blessing that I liked something that he liked. 
So then we came home. We had such a long drive. It was like a four hour drive. It rained the whole time um, back. We stopped in to get some Vietnamese pho, which was, our, it's our favorite thing to do. We stopped by this incredible place on the way home and then came home, watched a movie. And this morning we woke up and we just were like, wow, like we're starting our lives together. And we read the Bible this morning. And I think something that I haven't talked about much is like, how do we, um, read the Bible because I have, had, I have had people ask me like, how do you and Caleb manage your quiet times? Because what I've heard from other friends who have gotten married is they've told me it's so much harder to have a quiet time when you're married. And I was like, no, like surely it won't be. And it is to be honest. I was trying to figure out how to talk about this, but to be honest, I've honestly had a hard time getting in the word lately. And the last two weeks, you know, I've been really bad at reading my Bible and being consistent. And I started the Bible challenge on my Instagram, which of course I do those to encourage you guys to read a chapter a day. And I'm still trying to read, but I got super behind with the wedding, with travel, with honeymoon, with all that stuff. And so I'm just now catching up on Ephesians, but I've been really bad about reading my Bible. And there's like this weird, like guilt and shame that kind of comes over me of like, oh, you're a Christian influencer and like you're supposed to be posting about these things and sharing your thoughts. And I've had people be like, why, why aren't you sharing your thoughts on the November Bible challenge? And mainly it's just because I was in the middle of wedding season and I just got married, but um, I still want to share my thoughts, but I just felt this like kind of guilt, almost like, oh, you're supposed to be this Christian influencer. And I, I still read my Bible, but it just wasn't as in depth. And so that's something that I'm going to have to learn in marriage is because like you're married and your person is always around. And so normally like he would come over later in the afternoon when I've already read my Bible and I've worked out now it's like, Oh, he's here, you know, and there's nothing against it. It's just an adjustment. And so we have to learn how do we both read our Bible separately and stuff. So I kind of just have to like put AirPods in or just kind of tune out because it's so easy to get distracted by your person. And I know if you're married, you probably get this, but let me tell you, it's actually a lot harder. And I had friends warn me about this, which I'm thankful they did. They're like, it's a lot harder to get a quiet time in. Cause like in the past I would just sit for hours, like reading and studying and posting about it. And now it's kind of like you get distracted or the person's there. Like, I don't know how to just explain it. It's not even like his fault. It's just that it's like the nature of the game. So that's something I have to work on intentionally doing is creating a uh, morning routine that is like us just doing something a little bit more separate so that we have more quality time in the word. So part of the plan is that Caleb and I, we have like this fourth room that is just very chaotic. I've kind of showed on my Instagram. It has like my treadmill in there, which I'm going to sell because I just got a walking pad as a wedding registry gift, which I'm so thankful for. So we can clear up some space. So that way Caleb can kind of have like his own man cave. And then this room is my podcast room, but I want to still make it into like a guest room. Like I just move the equipment over when people come over and then I have a pullout couch and then my office across the hallway. So we're trying to figure out a way to still have quality time in the word, because I think we both need like some space where it's like, okay, I'm going to go read my Bible here. You're going to go read your Bible there. But we do read together a lot too. Like on our honeymoon, we read a lot this morning. He read to me, um, Genesis and stuff. So that was fun. But I will say that it's again, another adjustment because I know people were wondering like, what is it like now being married? What are, what are some things you're learning and stuff? So that's something that I'm, I'm adjusting to. And I'm adjusting to like a boy living in my house or a man living in my house where there's more clothing and there's more laundry and there's more dishes and it just requires a little bit more work. And so it's all good things. Like we're figuring out a rhythm. Like, you know, we both kind of have our chores. We don't say like, oh, this is your chore, but we both kind of like unspokenly know like, okay, Jay does the laundry. Caleb takes out the trash. We both do the laundry. I mean, the dishes, we just take turns where we can, you know what I mean? So but it's all things that we're learning. Like we've literally been in this for two weeks. And so we don't expect this to be perfect, but I will say marriage has been so fun. It feels so normal and so right. Like it doesn't feel like this life altering thing, but it just feels right. Like it just feels like, Oh, like we were meant to do this. You know what I mean? And so I'm just like, so thankful for the way it all went down. I know a lot of people said that we rushed everything and I don't know, I just wouldn't change a single thing. I'm very happy with the timing. I mean, truly the way we got married, the timing, how we saved ourselves from marriage. I mean, the, the pace of everything, like I personally wouldn't change a thing. And I know some people might think that we're crazy and that's okay. You know, like this is my life and you could do yours differently. But I just think as Christians who were waiting for marriage and that we're just ready to begin their lives together, this was perfect. And I'm so glad. And I'm so, I, I would not change a thing. And I think, I don't know, looking back, I feel like every 
heartbreak or question or doubt or worry or wonder to God of like, God, when is my person coming or how is this going to happen? Or who is this person? All of that got answered. And I remember, like I told you guys in when, in the podcast of um, how I knew my fiance was the one, like I gotten, I had got words, sorry, I had gotten prophecies five years prior. And so it took time, but God was preparing me and Caleb for each other. And he does that. And so it stinks because in the time you're just so frustrated with the Lord, like, God, where is he? When all these questions and God's just like, I'm preparing you, I'm preparing you, but he's writing your love story. And so it's just so beautiful to look back at the story that God wrote and be like, Oh, you never left me. You never forsaked me. You did care. You did see all the tears and the prayers and the dreams and just things that I never even knew to ask for that God put in Caleb for me and things that I did knew I needed things that I was like, yeah, I absolutely need this if I'm going to marry somebody and Caleb answered those as well. So I'm just so thankful for the story and being married is weird. Like it's a transition and it's almost like, whoa, like I'm not single anymore. I'm not, I I don't know. Your life is just different. It just is. And so I'm, I'm adjusting to that. And it's so exciting though. Like I'm not even saying it's bad. It's just an adjustment, but it's also so fun. Like I love hanging out with him. I love being with him and I don't know what it is, but it just changes things. Like, I just feel like I have so much more empathy and care for him. Like even as he's sick, it's like, I just want to like take care of him, make sure he's okay and do all those things. Like I just care about him so much more. And especially since becoming one, like you gain a new level of intimacy and care and respect for this person. And so just the way that God intended it for it to be is how it feels. And I just am so grateful for that. So Those are just some thoughts on the last couple weeks and marriage, and um, we're now entering into Christmas together, which is going to be so fun. We have my family coming over today for Thanksgiving, so I'm hosting, and then we go to Alaska for my family's Christmas since my sister lives there, and then New York, so that's going to be really fun, but this next month is going to be crazy, and like I said, we're going to have a series coming out next month, and I think... um, The podcast will probably end like the last weekend before the end of the year. So just stay tuned for that. But now I want to kind of answer some of y'all's questions and things that you guys wanted to know. The next thing that someone asked me to talk about is prophecy. Prophecy, go into detail what it is, scripture and your thoughts. So I like this question because I talk about prophecy a lot and I know this can be kind of taboo or an interesting topic to talk about. And maybe you don't even know what prophecy is. Prophecy is basically having a word of knowledge or a word of encouragement that may be pertaining to your future or your current situation. And it is from the Lord. Now, this is not like a mind reader. It's not a fortune teller. It's not like a tarot card reader. Like that's from the the devil and from the enemy. This would be from God. Not everyone has this and it requires a person that is in tune with God's spirit that knows God's voice and that is a believer and it has, they have to profess that it is from God. They cannot give themselves glory. They cannot say the universe told me it's from the Lord. And that person has to declare that it is from Jesus. And and that's what it says in the Bible. I think in first John four to test the spirits about how, if you test the spirits, they must profess that Jesus is the Lord and that Jesus is the one that they are getting that gift from. So if you go to first Corinthians, um, 14, or I'm sorry, let me find it. Um, I believe it is first Corinthians 14. It's talking about the gifts of the spirit and it's called prophecy in tongues. And I want to just read some of this to you guys because maybe you are like, okay, what, what is prophecy? What are tongues? I am a firm believer in all this stuff because I have seen it to work in my life. I've grown up with this my whole life. It never intimidated me because I was accustomed to it. Now, maybe if you're not accustomed to it, you're like, that is so weird. What, what is that? I know I get it. So that's why I'm here to hopefully help out. But basically it's like someone can come up to you and they can say, Hey, I have a word for you, or I feel like the Lord's telling me to tell you this, but here's the thing is that sometimes I know people have been hurt by prophecy because someone might've said like, Hey, your husband's coming next month, or I see you're getting a new job and you didn't. And you're like, what the heck? Like, and you're expecting your husband's on its way or you're going to get money and it doesn't happen. And so I know that uh, some people have gotten church hurt or have been hurt by God because of a false prophetic word. So that's why I would say to you, test it and test the spirits because 
if it didn't come true, then maybe it was just wrong. Or maybe that person didn't actually hear from the Lord. Maybe it was from them. But if it's from God, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come true. And for me, the prophetic words that I had in my life about Caleb, if you listen to my episode of how I knew Caleb was the one, those prophetic words actually came true. But they didn't come true for like four or five, two, three years. Like I had to wait to see that come to pass. So it's basically like writing them down and being like, okay, God, if they're true, show, show them to me. And if they don't, try not to put all your hope and worth into this one word because you don't want to bank all your coins on this one little thing because if it's not true, I don't want you to be left disappointed. However, the Bible is clear that prophecy is real and that's why I want to talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to read it and you just get cozy and it's 1 Corinthians 14. It says, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For the one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters the mysteries in the spirit. So speaking in tongues is basically a second language. And I know it sounds so bizarre, but I promise you it's real. I've done it. I have this gift. Um, it's like you speak in, you speak in a different language that God reveals to you and it's literally a language between you and God. This language is said to basically communicate the deepest parts of your heart and your soul to the Lord and he understands. It's also a tool of of intercession for people. It's a tool to fight back with the enemy and it's a way to just gain intimacy with the Lord. And um that's basically talking about how, you know, Paul's like encouraging everyone like, "Hey, desire this gift." On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to the people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself, but the one who prophesies build up, builds up the church. So basically tongues are just for you and God. Like tongues is like, it's a prayer language where it's supposed to be just you and God in like your bedroom or you and God in the car. Like it's not supposed to be where you go to the church and you're just speaking in tongues in front of everybody because A, people can't understand you unless they have the gift of interpretation or B, unless they can't understand you. And it might confuse some people or it might scare some people. They might be like, what is this person crazy? Like in the Bible, when people started getting the gift of the spirit and the t- gift of tongues, people thought that they were drunk when in reality they were just baptized in the Holy Spirit. So you don't want to kind of like confuse people unless, you know, it's a safe environment or there's an interpreter around, which is what the Bible says. But gifts of prophecy are for encouraging and building up people, which is what first Corinthians 14 is saying. So it's saying that like, you want with these gifts, it's meant to encourage and edify the church. It's meant to build up the church, which is us. We are the church. We are the people. The building is just a representation of the church, but it's not like literally what God means when he says the church, we are people who are the church. He says, so I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets, which is what I said, so that the church may be built up. Because for example, I know this sounds crazy y'all, but I promise you it's real. It's in the Bible. I've seen it. It's real. Um, Prophecy is basically when like, I mean, uh, tongues, like if you were in a church and someone had the gift of tongues and someone interpreted that would have, that gift of tongues in the church should be to build up the church or build up someone in that church. It's not just to be where you pray out loud to you and God. Like I said, that's supposed to be for like you and God in your bedroom. You know what I mean? Like in private, basically. Now, brothers, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophet or prophecy or teaching? If even lifeless instruments such as the flute or harp do not give distinct notes, how will anyone know what is played? If the bugle gives an indistinct sound, who will get ready for the battle? So with yourselves, if with your tongue you utter speech that is not inintelligible, how will anyone know what is said? For you will be speaking into the air. So it's basically saying like, Nobody knows what you're saying if you're speaking in tongues because it's just supposed to be between you be supposed to be between you and God. Everyone has their own unique prayer language. No one has the same prayer language. So no one's going to understand you. So he's like you're speaking into the air and you're not really benefiting the body of Christ. There are doubtless many different languages in the world and none was is without meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker and the speaker a foreigner to me. So with yourself since you are eager for the manifestations of the spirit, strive to excel or to excel in building up the church. That's the utmost important thing is to build up the church, build up the body of Christ, build up people who need encouragement because there's been so many times where like, you know, someone's dad passes away or someone's going through heartbreak or someone's going through a really hard time. The gift of prophecy 
is meant to encourage somebody that needs to know, hey, God sees you. God cares about you. He hasn't left you. This is the word for you. Maybe this person's having a hard time hearing God for themselves. And this person is interceding on this person's behalf with their faith and with their revelations from Jesus or from God. So therefore, one who speaks in, the t- speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So basically, what this is also saying is that the speaking in tongues is not something that you can just grasp in the flesh. It's not a mind thing where you have to like learn the vowels, learn the sounds. The speaking in tongues comes from your spirit, which is what this is saying. Your mind is unfruitful. Like your mind is just thinking of whatever, but your mouth and your spirit are what are connecting to communicate to God. Have I lost you yet? (laughs) Do you guys think I'm crazy? I promise you this is sounding, this sounds crazy. This is not some woo woo voodoo crap like stuff. Like I promise you it's real. So what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will give thanks. If you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of outsider say amen to your Thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying for you may be giving thanks well enough, but though, but not know uh, the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you. Nevertheless, in the church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. So this is also talking about how like a lot of people place emphasis on spiritual gifts and they say that in order to be saved, you need to have a spiritual gift. You need to speak in tongues. You need to prophesy whatever in order to get salvation, which is not true. He's basically saying he'd rather speak five words that are meant to build up the other the other Christians and the people in the church than tongues than 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 tongues which nobody can understand at all and that doesn't build up the church. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking, be infants and in evil, but in your thinking be mature. It is written in the law by people of strange tongues and the, by the lips of the foreigners I will speak to the people and even they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Thus, tongues are a sign not for believers but for unbelievers. Well, prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers. If therefore the whole church comes together and all speaks in tongues and outsiders or unbelievers enter, they will, they, will they not say that you are out of your minds? But if all prophesy an unbeliever and outsider enters, he is convicted by all. He is called to account by all the secrets of the heart are disclosed. And so falling on falling on his face, he will worship God and declare that God really is among you. So what he's saying here is that if someone that was an unbeliever were to come into the church and someone were to say, Hey, I have a word for you. This is an encouragement and something that only God would know. And you said, for example, Hey, do you by chance have a red car that you crashed two weeks ago? This person would probably be like, wait, what? Like, how did you know that? Well, God told me. That would be a sign for an unbeliever to be like, oh my gosh, God is real. Now for a an unbeliever to come into the church and see tongues, they might be like, y'all are crazy. Y'all are out of your minds. This place is like, this place is going crazy. I'm getting out of here. Like I'm, I'm fleeing because they would be like, y'all are psycho. What is, what's happening? But that's why prophecy can be obviously for unbelievers and non-believers, but prophecy specifically can be for unbelievers to show them, Hey, there is a God. I'm not a fortune teller. And this God sees you. And he gave me a detail that only God would know to share with you, to encourage you and show you that he is real and he loves you and he knows you. And that is why I believe in prophecy. It's real. It's in the scripture. And there's so many things in the Bible. The prophet Isaiah is basically a prophet that told what would happen years. And I mean, decades before Jesus came and Jesus died and all the things. And so prophets are real and they're very much in the Bible and very much in my life still today. I haven't got any prophetic words recently, but before meeting Caleb, I got so, so many and crazily enough, they all came true took some time but that's why again the bible says to test the spirits because just because someone's like i have a word from you from god doesn't mean that you just should immediately take it like you have to see does this resonate with my spirit is this true does this pertain to me or is this person just is this person just capping is this person just calling bs so you can just be like okay interesting thank you but if it does you know fit to you be like great thank you so much that pertains to me if it doesn't write it down and then just see what the Lord does. The next question someone asked me is, how are you confident that what you're telling your listeners is from God? So that's a great question. But what I always try to do is I give scripture. So like what someone said to me, you know, 
talk about prophecy and talk about it with scripture. I read this book as much as I can. I try to digest it as much as I can. I try to make sure that whatever I say is from the Bible because the Bible is God's word. It is God breathed and the Bible is alive and active today. And this is where we know what God says, where we know what's true, what's real and what God wants us to know. And so by me reading the Bible, I would be very, very, very weary to ever listen to a Christian influencer or any influencer at all that's claiming certain things and does not talk about the Bible, does not read scripture, does not back up what they're saying with scripture. It is so important, whomever you listen to, a pastor or a podcaster or an influencer, whomever, to know, okay, are they reading the Bible? Do they know the word of God? And eventually and occasionally, people might say some things that you're like, I don't know about that because oftentimes people can debate about theological differences and just are like, I don't know, or people can interpret scripture differently, which is kind of stinky, but it's true. So I might say something and I really could think like, I feel like this is from the Lord, but someone could say, okay, no, according to the scripture, I don't think you're right. Now that could be totally based off of your denomination, your background, your upbringing, whatever. But I just assure you guys that I try to say things that I feel are real and right and that God has spoken to me. I have seen to work in my life. I really try never to talk about things that I haven't really gone through. Like for example, I wouldn't really totally be able to speak about anxiety and depression. I can talk about moments of that, but I've never actually suffered with that. And so that's why I don't think I would be the best person to listen to about anxiety and depression or something like that, because it's not something I've totally struggled with. And so the things I speak about are the things I've gone through. And if I haven't gone through it, I try to bring on a guest or somebody that has gone through it that can speak to that. They, and they have overcome that, you know what I mean? So just knowing that I, I really try to spend my time in the word and I pray and I try to invite the Holy Spirit into this podcast so that he gives me the words. But again, just like with anything, you have to test it as well. You have to be able to say, okay, is what she's saying correct? And if it's not, you know, let me know. And you can hopefully go back to the Bible and test it as well. And I just want to read the scripture to you really fast because it is the um, test of spirit scripture. And it says in first John four, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone into the world. And by this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now already in the world little children, you are from God and they have, and have overcome them for he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. So again, anything that you listen to, I would just be weary and making sure that, um, these people are actually professing God. Okay. The next thing that someone wants me to talk about is how to share your faith. And I have a good example of this, um, recently because when Caleb and I were on our honeymoon, um, the Lord really put someone specifically on my heart and we got to share the gospel with him. So on the last night of our honeymoon, um, we had this dinner and it was so delicious and we were walking back from the restaurant to our hotel room and the restaurant was a little bit further out. And so we had to pass by this like exit and there was a security guard. The security guard was basically making sure that no random person like came into the resort. And so we walked by him and we were going to go use the bathroom and the bathroom was near him. And, um, as we were walking out of the bathroom, Caleb was like chatting with him when I came out from the bathroom and he was just like, Oh, Hey dude, like blah, blah, blah. Caleb's super, he's super friendly. He was chit, chit chatting with the guy. And so we walked away. We we're like, okay, bye. Nice to meet you. So as we were walking away, I just felt like we were supposed to talk to him. Like I felt this like ping in my spirit. And I told Caleb, I was like, Caleb, I really feel like we're supposed to talk to this guy. And he was like, are you sure? And we were already like halfway back to our hotel room. Like it was not it was not a super close walk. It was a far walk. And he was like, okay, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I don't, are we bothering him? I was like, I mean, maybe, but I was like, I just feel like we're supposed to talk to him. And so we decided to walk back. We went back up to him and he was probably like a little surprised of like, okay, why are these people back? Why are they bothering me? But he was the nicest thing ever. His name was Don, Donway the nicest thing ever. He was just so sweet. And so we got to know him and we got his name. We asked him for his story. And so basically like, I just want to say, you can start sharing the gospel by just simply asking someone their name. You can simply say, Hey, what's your name? Where are you from? So we did that. We got his name and he got his story. And I said, Hey, I know this sounds kind of weird. I just feel like 
I was supposed to talk to you. And I asked him, I said, do you have a faith or do you know Jesus? Turns out he did grow up in a Christian church, but he kind of walked away from his faith a little bit. And he was like, well, yeah, I grew up in the church and I don't really go as consistent anymore, but I do know like who Jesus is. And I asked him, I said, okay, that's so amazing. Like, so we got to just kind of like ask him his backstory. And then I asked him, well, if you were to die tomorrow, like, do you know where you would go? Like, do you have any assurance on where you would go? And this is where he started to wrestle. He was like, honestly, I don't know. I feel like in my opinion, what I think happens is you just get buried in the grave and then eventually your soul just goes somewhere. He's like, I mean, either it could be heaven or hell, but I just don't really know. And I said, well, what if I could give you the solution that you were looking for? What if I could give you the answer that you were looking for? And he was like, great, I'd love to hear it. So then I started to recite scripture to him, which I read him, I just knew from memory because we had just done the Romans challenge for the month of November for the Bible challenges. And I remembered reading Romans 10, nine, which says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he was raised from the grave, you will be saved. Everyone who calls in the name of Jesus will be saved. And I said, do you believe that? And like, what do you think about that? And he was like, that sounds great. And so I tried to basically share the gospel. I shared that, you know, we're sinners in need of a savior, that our sin separates us from Christ and to believe in Jesus and to go to get into heaven and to have a relationship with him is praying and admitting, Jesus, I need a savior. I need someone to help me. And just saying, God, I believe in you. I'm confessing with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Jesus and you were raised from the dead. And I'm inviting you into my life, into my heart. And I surrender. And I asked him, like, do you want to do that? And he was like, yes. <laughs> And he was just so sweet, but it was like he knew Jesus, but he just needed to get that assurance of who Jesus was. And so we basically got to just get to hear more of his story. And turns out he confessed that he was going through a really hard time with his family, had some really bad financial issues that Caleb and I ended up getting to help him out with, which was so, so sweet. And he never like begged for anything. Like he just genuinely was sharing his story. And like, we just felt like God put in our heart to give to this person and to just bless him. And so we ended up praying over him, laying hands over him. Of course, whenever you are sharing the gospel, you want to be very respectful still and be respectful of their space and everything. And so before we prayed over him, I said, do you mind if we put our hands on you? And he said, no, I don't mind. So we prayed over him. We prayed blessing and he received it. And he genuinely was just so, so grateful. And so that's typically what, in my my opinion, what it looks like to share the gospel. A lot of the times Caleb and I together, it's easier when you have the person, a person with you to kind of bounce off of, because we did bounce off of each other. Um, and also him being a guy like Caleb could relate to him more and show him like, Hey, this isn't just some like weird girl trying to come on to you. Like it was like, Hey, no, we're like safe people that we want to just like, have, you know, Jesus. So it's just getting to know their story, getting to know their name, making sure they feel that they're comfortable, that they don't think you're like some freak who's trying to like steal money from them or something. And, uh, just being like, okay, Hey, what's your background? What's your story? Here's my story. Like I got to share with him a little bit of my story. And the Bible says in Romans 12, I believe that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimonies are extremely powerful in setting other people free because they're the one thing that people cannot deny even though people may try to, they may be like, I don't think that happened to you. You know what happened to you and you know how Jesus saved you from something. So you never know in your story what might set someone else free. You never know what could relate to somebody or resonate with them where they're like, wow, I felt the same way. So I got to share with him a little bit of my story and how I was chasing all these things and how Jesus ultimately was the satisfier of my soul. And I said, even though I just got married, I said, my husband is never meant to be the one that will fully satisfy me. That was Jesus's role from the beginning. And so he admitted, you know, I've been chasing things. I've been trying to find satisfaction. I feel a little unsatisfied. And I said, what you're looking for is Jesus. And so encouraging them, giving them hope, showing them why do you believe what you believe, asking them if you can pray for them, asking if there's something specific you can pray for them in and letting the Lord work in that. And then also just letting them know about the gospel. Like, Hey, Jesus died for you so that you could have eternity in heaven with him. If you believe in him, otherwise we are separated from Jesus. Sin separates us. And that it was just what we wanted to do. And he was so thankful. And it was like, the trip was just so worth it getting to help this man. And I pray that, you know, he's blessed and we, we got to bless him. And I just pray that that like genuinely lasted for him. And even if it didn't, we still were obedient. You know, JP, he's a pastor. He always says that, um, obedience is not determined by the outcome. So just because we don't know what the outcome is going to be or what that's going to look like, doesn't mean that you still don't be obedient. Like we can't always define obedience by the outcome. And I think that's so powerful is that we're just called to be obedient. We're not called to be like, okay, what, what happened next? Did they accept Jesus right then and there? Did they fall on their hands and knees and cry? And it's like, no, we're just called to be 
the the seed planters and let God water it or let someone else build upon that and water it. We don't know what God's going to do. And so he actually got Caleb's number and uh, he said he would follow up with us. So we're praying that we just bless him. But again, it's only like by the free gift that God has given us, like he gives a free gift that we get, which is salvation. I read that today in Ephesians, like it's a free gift that by his mercy and his grace on us, we get that gift. And we just get to pass it on as believers because it is the hope and the solution to everything. And so that was a testimony, real life testimony of how you can share your faith. It's so powerful just to ask people their story. You never know what you'll find in it, how you relate and how you can speak to their to their story and hopefully give them a hope that they've been looking for. And so that is one way you can share your faith. And I hope that's an encouragement to you as well. Well, I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me in today's episode of Happy and Healthy. Kind of a random episode, but I wanted just to hang out and chit chat and sit down with my peeps. Um, I do want to feature that voice memo really, really fast. So let's get into that really fast. Hey, Janine and Caleb. I just wanted to send you a message. I just listened to the post wedding and y'all are seriously the cutest. And it's so encouraging to me, someone who just celebrated a, another year of life. I just turned 35 and I'm single and no prospects in sight. Um, but seeing how one Janine, you you lived your single season so well, and I've been following you for probably about two years now, and I just have been extremely encouraged with how you live your life, and then to see the transition from heartbreak to this amazing man of God, Caleb, and just the way you love her and appreciate her and show up for her is just so encouraging. So y'all keep going. I'm very excited, and I just have to end it with, it's all I ever wanted. <laughs> love you guys. I'm dead. That is so funny. Thank you for that voice memo. Her name was Ash. And I just want to say thank you. Um, I wish Caleb got to hear that. I'm going to play that to him later. But that is so funny that that saying picked up that all I ever wanted. <laughs> I never thought that saying would actually pick up because we just said it as a joke. And now like y'all say it to us all the time. It's so funny. I'm like, should we make t-shirts that say all I ever wanted? Also, speaking of merch really fast, I was going to do merch and I had some complications. So I'm going to have merch probably come out next year. I'm sorry. I know I've been trying to work on it, but merch is way more complicated than y'all can imagine. So I'm going to be working on that very soon, but I would say that's going to come out more next year than this year. So I apologize. I know I want the merch to come out soon as well, but it is such a lengthy process. So please stay tuned. And, um, Thank you guys for just hanging out with me and thank you for being a part of the journey. Truly, I'm so thankful for just the Lord in my life and what he's done. Um, man, God is just so good. And when you seek him and you're faithful to him, he blesses you. And it doesn't always just come in the form of a spouse or finances or anything like that, but you live a more fruitful, peaceful life. And so my encouragement is read the word of God, follow the Lord. He will bless you. And I don't know what that looks like, but he hears your prayers. He knows the things you're going through. He cares. I care. And I pray this podcast continues to be a blessing for y'all. We are almost in December. So make sure you're following along my Instagram where we're going to be doing the book of Luke for the no the December Bible challenge. So stay tuned for that. And we'll have a new series coming soon as well. So that'll be fun for the holidays. It'll be a combination of both Caleb and I. Just to clarify, I will still be doing solo episodes. Don't you guys worry. I love solo episodes. That's what this podcast was built on was these solo episodes and just hanging out with you guys. Um, so that I will still be doing those. And I'm just thankful for this page and it's growing in this podcast and our listeners and everything. So y'all mean the world to me. Thanks for being a, a supporter, donating monthly. If you do financially, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More fun changes coming next season. And it's been a great, great season. We're not over yet, but we'll be ending probably the last week of December. So love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me on today's episode of Happy and Healthy. I pray this blesses you. And until then, until next Tuesday, stay happy and healthy. Bye, y'all.